Hey guys, so this is a vlog of my trip to Yellowstone. So as you can see, I brought Daisy and she just came along with me in my carry-on bag. If you've seen some of my other traveling videos, you know that I take my dolls a lot of places on vacation and I would really recommend it. I find that I'm more willing to take pictures out in public when I'm on vacation than when I'm at home because I'm less likely to run into somebody I know on vacation. And also I have this like mentality of, okay, all these people that I'm seeing here that are watching me take doll photos, I'm never gonna see them again in my life. So I don't really care what they think about my dolls. I had not been on an airplane in quite a while and I always really love being on airplanes. I don't know, there's just something like so magical about being on airplanes. It's just, I don't know, it's so much fun. Um, but our first plane left at I think like six o'clock in the morning. So we had to get there pretty early and I am not a morning person, um, but we took off and everything went really smoothly. So here's a little airplane montage for you to enjoy. So after our first flight, we landed in Chicago and I have never been to Chicago before, but I could not believe how big it was. Like, I feel like you always hear about that, but you only ever see the main like skyline buildings. And I was just like, it's huge. It just the, the amount of area that it takes up. I don't know, it was crazy. Then we landed in the Chicago airport and luckily we didn't have to like go to a different building or anything the gate we were taking off from um, was pretty close to the one that we landed in so we didn't have to go too far then we were ready to take off and head to bozeman which is a town right outside of the yellowstone park limits and a lot of people stay there for like one night just to kind of get all their stuff together because once you get into the park there are like no grocery stores or anything so we wanted to like stock up on food here's another airplane montage i hope these aren't too boring for you guys <laughs> You could tell whenever we started to get close and whenever we got into Montana because you could see the beautiful mountains. It was seriously amazing being able to see them from the airplane because they were just breathtaking. Most of this airplane ride and all the other ones, I was crocheting little doll hats for my Etsy shop. Once we landed in Bozeman, we found where we were staying and kind of just walked around Bozeman getting supplies and stuff. So the next day we drove into the national park and it was a really, really pretty drive. It's a long drive because there's normally a ton of people trying to get in and out, but we didn't have too bad traffic and it was really, really pretty. And we saw a few bison when we were going there, which was really exciting. Um, and then when we got there, we signed into the place we were staying and then we went and we watched Old Faithful go off and we walked around um, the hill that is around Old Faithful and kind of that area and just looked at all the geysers going off. And we walked around there around sunset, which was so, so pretty. That was probably like one of the favorite, my favorite things we did all the whole trip um, because it was just really pretty to see all the geysers and the lake and everything at nighttime i honestly loved the geysers so much i feel like i could have stayed there watching them for quite a long time but then i got out daisy and i took some pictures of her and there weren't a ton of people around since it was later in the day so i felt comfortable taking her out then as we were heading back a ton of fishes are jumping out of this river to catch the bugs that were flying right around there it was the craziest thing then we just headed back and that was all for day two the next day, me and my dad woke up early and we went on a walk and saw this bison that was really close to us, which was really cool. 
and then we walked around the area with all the geysers which was really cool to see and all the other thermal features which are really pretty and we got to see the sun rise which was really cool since we saw the sun set last night honestly the geysers were my favorite part of the whole trip to yellowstone i could have sat there for days watching those things but i think my brother and dad my dad were getting kind of tired of seeing just steam and water coming out of a little hole in the ground but i thought they were really really fascinating another thing i loved about yellowstone was seeing all the wildlife this little guy is called a yellow-bellied marmot and he's like the size of a groundhog he's adorable and he was just chilling there watching the geysers it was so cute and of course, I took more pictures of Daisy while we were on our walk. Then we all went over to watch the Grand Geyser go off. It only goes off like twice a day, and we were here waiting for hours for it to go off. But we did see another little marmot. He was just sitting there waiting with us, waiting on his little ledge. Um, he eventually left before the geyser went off. I guess he got impatient, but it was really cool to see him just like sitting there watching. Our long wait finally paid off. The Grand Geyser was really, really cool to see. I think it went off for like 20 minutes. Um, it was really, really cool. It went really high. I mean, Old Faithful is impressive, but just the sheer amount of water that this thing puts out in the air is incredible. It's also pretty impressive how loud the geysers are. You don't really expect them to be that loud, but they just sound so powerful. You can hear how deep the hole is that it's coming out of. Then we went to go look at a variety of different thermal features that were all kind of clustered together. And it's interesting how many different types of thermal features there are. Um, there were also some small geysers here that we stayed to watch. And one of them was called the Daisy Geyser. And I took a video of Daisy next to the Daisy Geyser. So on day four, we hiked up this like mountain hill thing and it was overlooking a valley with all the geysers and stuff. So it was really cool to see all the geysers, kind of an overview. And then we saw a ton of chipmunks and we also, I took a ton of pictures of Daisy. Um, I really like how these pictures turned out, but it was, it was cool because you could see like the whole like Yellowstone, kind of the geyser valley like laid out. I think it's called geyser basin like you could see it and see all of the geysers from high up and you could also see i think that's the yellowstone river that river down there that's running we saw a few bison and these waterfalls have a name i just can't remember what it is but they were really really pretty and we went early in the morning so it wasn't too hot and it wasn't like there weren't a ton of people and this chipmunk right here they were so, so cute. You could see them like taking the little thing down and eating. Oh my gosh, it was adorable. And there were so many of them doing that. But anyway, then we walked down to this little river and we found a path that led actually to where you could get to the water. So that was really cool. And then my brother decided it was a good idea to go out on this like fallen tree into the middle of the river. I thought he was gonna fall, but luckily he didn't, he was fine. And then of course I took pictures of Minnie Caroline. I really liked having a mini doll with me so I could take her out and take pictures of her in places that I didn't want to take Daisy out. Then we went and saw this like bubbling mud, which was really satisfying to watch for some reason. And these geysers were nearby that we stayed and watched and they were really tall. And then we went to the Grand Prismatic Springs, which are one of the more well-known areas of Yellowstone. And it's hard to see all the colors from ground level, so a lot of the pictures of it that you'll see are taken from the sky. The next day we went and saw more bubbling mud um, called mud pots. I think these were like artist paint pots or something, but they were so satisfying to watch and to listen to. They make a really neat noise. I could have stood there like all day watching. As we were driving along, I looked up and saw this giant wall of rock, which was really impressive, but also at the same time terrifying. This day was a lot of driving and it was a really, really pretty drive, but we were basically going from one side of Yellowstone to the other. We did see a lot of wildlife. We saw a ton of bison. They were just, we stopped at this one place to look and they were just everywhere. It was really, really cool. We'd seen like one or two here and there, but it was really neat to see just a whole valley filled with bison because the longer you looked, the more you saw. It was like every little speck was a bison. It was really cool. It was also adorable to see the little baby bison. They were so cute. 
The bison were so close that they actually were crossing the road. So we ended up being stopped in a bison traffic jam for a while. But we eventually got through and went to another overlook where we saw a line of bison. And it was so funny because the ones at the end were like running to catch up. It was amazing to see so many bison so close up. I mean, they were so close we could hear them making noise. And I didn't know a bison even made noise. It was mating season for the bison while we were there. And so we did have to make sure to be careful because just like a couple days before, a car had gotten rammed by bison. I crocheted a little bit while we were driving and then we had to stop again because we saw a bear. The bear was definitely a lot further away than the bison, but it was still really cool to see. And apparently she had cubs with her, but I didn't see them. Then we arrived at where we were staying, but right next to where we were staying, we saw this deer go through the woods. She was definitely not scared of people, which isn't necessarily a good thing. The next day started off with us seeing this really cool elk or mule deer, I don't remember which one it was, but it was really cool to see since he had his giant antlers. Then we headed to the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and saw a giant waterfall. It's really incredible to see that much water moving every minute. Then we hiked up this little path that went up the mountain and I took more pictures of Caroline and it was really cool to see the waterfall and the valley from a different vantage point. And I even took out Daisy to get a few pictures. On day seven, we entered Grand Tetons, which is a national park right next to Yellowstone. We stopped on the side of the road and saw this bald eagle. And later on, we saw a ton of bison that were really, really close. The bison we'd seen previous days had been really close, but I mean, these were so close that you could have reached out and touched them. Since they were so close, we could hear the noise they make, which is really interesting noise. It's incredible to see the bison that close, but since they were like right next to the road, traffic was stopped. But I honestly didn't really mind since we got to see the bison so close up. When they're that close, you can really tell how massive they are and they're huge. They're like the size of a small car. Then we went and saw this thermal feature, which was called Churning Cauldron, I think. And it was neat to see because it was different than the ones we'd seen before. And it was basically just like a little pond that was really hot and like churning. But it did have a really potent smell of sulfur. This thermal feature right here used to be a geyser that went really, really tall, but I don't think it's active anymore. I think this one was called like Dragon's Cave or something, but it was neat because you couldn't see how far it went, but you could just see like waves of water coming out. Then we drove to the Yellowstone Lake, which is just, as the name suggests, a giant lake in Yellowstone. And the view is just really, really pretty because you can see the mountains in the background and the sky was really blue this day and the waters are really clear. But we found like a little place to go take pictures so we stopped and i got out daisy and took some pictures of her i have not edited them yet so ignore my finger but i think they turned out pretty well we also saw this unfortunate tree that has been cut up by people engraving their name into it and it was just a really sad thing to see do not cut up any nature much less nature in a national park anyway then we continued on our journey to the place that we were staying for a couple days. And at this point, we have entered the Grand Tetons, and you can see the mountains a lot clearer. Once we got to the place we were staying, we hiked up this kind of shorter trail, and we actually ended up going up it later again too, because the view from there is just so, so pretty. You can see the lake with the mountains in the background, and there was the sunset. It was so pretty. I didn't take any pictures of Daisy, but we came back the next day. So this was really our last day in Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons, and we did a lot. We started off by waking up quite early and going on Jenny Lake, and I took some pictures of Caroline while we were on the little ferry. And the ferry took us across the lake to go hike up the mountains that you could see from our view last night. It had rained a lot the day before, so the waterfalls were very full, and we took a little hike off to the side to go see them a little bit closer. Then we went on the main path, which went up to like a little overlook thing where you could look over the lake. And I found this cute little snail and decided he deserved a photo shoot. Then we hiked up even higher to another overlook where you could see the lake from even higher up. The views are absolutely incredible. We found like this little stream creek thing and I stopped to take some pictures of Minnie Caroline. Then I stopped to take more pictures of Minnie Caroline when we got to this kind of rocky area. 
And right after that, we had our first moose sighting. Yes, this is a moose. Even though it doesn't have antlers, it's just a female. And she had a little baby with her, which was just adorable. So as we had been on this hike, I was trying to pick up any pieces of trash that I saw. And it made me really sad to see that someone had shoved this water bottle all the way down into these rocks to the point where I could not reach it. It just made me sad because why would you do that? Why did you need to go and ruin the nature with your plastic bottle? On a better note, I discovered my new favorite animal. These little guys are called pikas and they live in the rocks around the Grand Tetons. They are just the cutest thing. And they make a cute little noise too. Then right around the same area, we saw even more cute animals. There was this little mother duck and her little ducklings just floating along. They were so cute. I loved seeing all the wildlife in the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone. Then I took more pictures of Minnie Caroline and we continued on our hike. This was definitely the longest hike we did all trip, but it was a lot of fun. To me, hiking is just so calming and relaxing. As we continued on our hike, we had a really exciting but also nerve-wracking encounter. This young black bear was walking right alongside the trail with us. It was kind of scary, but also really cool. After a hike, we left the national park and went to a nearby town called Jackson. It's just like a little tourist town and I think they do skiing and stuff in the winter, but we just walked around and looked at different shops. Minnie Caroline even got to sit in a little bear chair. Then we drove back to where we were staying and the drive as always was super pretty, but then we hiked up to the place that we were last night. And I brought Daisy this time, so I got to take a bunch of pictures. And that was everything we did on our last day in Yellowstone. The next morning, we drove to Jackson Hole Airport to leave Yellowstone. It was a really small airport and they didn't have like terminals, so we just walked up to the plane. Then we boarded and we were off. So that concludes my Yellowstone slash Grand Teton National Park vlog. I know this isn't super doll related, but I mean, I did bring a couple of my dolls. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, even though it wasn't doll related. I know I always like seeing travel vlogs when people bring their dolls, so I thought I would film it and make a video out of it. If you watch this whole thing, I'm impressed because I know it's going to be long and probably not the most exciting thing. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!